So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second webinar of the webinar series focusing on selfie for teachers. My name is Sefi Saltidu and I'm the coordinator of the webinar series. It gives me great pleasure to be in your company today and I extend my heartfelt appreciation to each and every one of you for joining us in this lighting session. In the previous webinar on Monday, we introduced the Selfie for Teachers tool, discussed its benefits, and after that, you hopefully engaged in a hands-on activity, you used the tool and reflected based on specific questions. Now, in this session, experienced practitioners will guide you through using the tool effectively. They will explain how to interpret the data, guide you through using the tool effectively, and implement tailored strategies for professional growth considering their own experience. A school leader will share their perspective on adopting selfie for teachers at school level, while a teacher will share insights and reflections on how the tool has impacted her professional development and teaching practices. If you have any questions during the session, you can type them in the chat box and we'll have a dedicated Q&A moment towards the end where we will address them. Uh, additionally, throughout the webinar, we'll be expecting your comments and reactions. So get ready to share your thoughts, learn from each other, react to what you hear and make the most out of the session. Now I would like to introduce the speakers of today. Uh, Irina Kundur is a media studies teacher in Cyprus with an academic background in art and design. Irini was a member of the pilot teachers group using the Selfie for Teachers tool. And of course, we'll share the teacher's perspective. Sam Gallagher is the principal of, primary, of a primary school with 355 pupils in Ireland, and he was the Irish coordinator of the pilot for the Selfie framework to assist schools with their planning with regard to the use of technology. Without further ado, I will give the floor to the speakers. We will start with San. San, welcome. The stage is yours. Okay, thanks very much and uh, a sincere welcome to everyone across Europe uh, this afternoon uh, from the west coast of Ireland, um, where it is unseasonably sunny. Uh, you know, I believe it's even warmer here than in some places in Europe, which is most unusual. Um, as Evie has said, my name is Sean Gallagher, um, and this is a picture of my school on the West Coast. Uh, we have 355 pupils, uh, eight class levels, four curriculum levels, and they're aged five to 13 years of age. We have 14 mainstream class teachers, five special education teachers, and five special needs assistants for uh, children with special education needs. Our website can be viewed at quignamangerns.ie. So that's that's the official name of our school. Uh, just further context um, in our location in Europe uh, is dropped there on the, the pin drop. So we're one of the most Western schools in Europe. And because we are on the West Coast and away from any university town, um, we are over 200 kilometers from any university that specializes in teacher education, in primary teacher education, uh, I should say. Um, we feel we have to work in clusters with other schools. So we work and we plan collectively uh, with other schools in the region, and we have certainly worked and planned with them when it comes to selfie and when it comes to selfie for teachers. Uh, just to give you a bit more insight in the, into the technology that's available in the school and maybe to schools in Ireland uh, so you can compare contexts. First of all, uh, every school in Ireland is part of a national school broadband provision. So all our websites are content filtered, uh, which uh, allows for internet safety. Uh, we have access to a school portal, so www.skelnet.ie. That's free to all Irish schools, and it gives us access to Britannica Online, an online encyclopedia. Within our own school, there are digital flat screens uh, mounted in every classroom. Every teacher has a laptop and a G Suite profile aligned with a school domain. Pupils in the senior end, so from about uh, age 9 to 13, 
have a profile on G Suite with school domain. We have 30 school owned and centrally managed Chromebooks. They're shared between the pupils in third and sixth class. So we do not have one to one devices or anything near it. We have 15 school owned and centrally managed iPads for junior students. So for age five up to about eight and they're available on a timetable basis. We have sets of uh, micro bit for basic computer programming. We have some subscription services and our neighboring schools are quite similar in terms of their level of uh, technology that's in the school. As a school leader, uh, I have to look over the development of the school in two domains. The first domain, which is the most important one, is learning and teaching. So uh, the school management team is responsible for that. And I have found that the Selfie for Teachers framework has certainly helped me uh, greatly in looking at learning and teaching in my school and most importantly, planning for the future with action items that are tangible and that we can work towards. The second domain that I have to look, take a look at as a school leader is leadership and management. And I have found the selfie framework, the original selfie framework to be of value in that domain. So the two frameworks can work interchangeably or they complement each other. And over the next few minutes, I will show you or I will detail my experiences with both. So first of all, the selfie framework, I'm not going to give it huge detail. It has eight areas that we as a school sat down and analyzed ourselves through. So we looked at the area of leadership when it comes to technology, collaboration and networking, infrastructure, et cetera. The eight domains or the eight areas are there. The lessons we learned well, under the area of leadership, we found that we were doing quite well because I'm a newly appointed principal in this school and I have a very good assistant principal who has responsibility for embedding technology in teaching and learning. And the school respected all the great work that was uh, going on. In terms of collaboration and networking, we were able to see that everyone's ability to collaborate together and to network had improved a lot during COVID closures, um, but now it was going to change its format. Uh, so everyone's ability in this um, domain had improved. In terms of infrastructure and equipment, we were happy that there was no major issue in the school. However, certain students needed further technology uh, just to assist them with specific needs that they had. However, we did recognize that should we ever have to return to hybrid learning or home-based learning, that there would still be an issue with the range and the type of device that pupils had. Our location means that a lot of our professional development has to happen within ourselves. We do not have access to a university straight away. We do have access to great projects. We do have access to um, great online courses, but for face-to-face -face professional development, we really have to make it happen ourselves. In the area of pedagogy, the main area that we could see, and this is the one I've highlighted in red, is that when it came to the implementation or the use of technology in the classroom, a lot of the time we were consuming information rather than creating it. So we set that as one of our priority areas. Assessment, we were very lucky to be part of an e-portfolio project. We're quite good technically, but we need to do more work when it comes to formative assessment practices. And we recognized through the selfie framework that we needed to do a lot of work on student digital competence. So. The selfie framework really helped us to identify gaps at whole school level. And the highest priority that we set ourselves was to move away from consumption of digital content, 
but we wanted to create it as well. So now I needed to see how could the Selfie for Teachers framework help me and help us as a school team. So I'll just go back again. The Selfie framework helps us look at it at a whole school basis. And now we're going to look at it from a, an individual teacher basis. So the Selfie for Teacher uh, tool, as you're well aware, it allowed us to create a multitude of different um, uh, reports, a selfie for teacher report for teacher one, for teacher two, for teacher three, etc. And we, and as you know, there are six domains, professional engagement, teaching and learning, digital resources, assessment, empowering learners and facilitating learners' digital competence. And what we did was we tried to map it with selfie. So on the left hand side, we have our eight areas of selfie. And then we looked at selfie for teachers. And in particular, we looked at digital resources because remember our priority area at a whole school level was the move away from consumption of digital content to creation. And then within the digital resources, what we did was we took a drill down with the assistance of the Selfie for Teachers framework and said, well, what really are digital resources? What do we want to aspire to? And of course, the Selfie for Teachers framework helps us to see that digital resources can be considered under five headings, searching and selecting, which I think we were doing reasonably well, but we weren't very good at creating, modifying, managing and protecting our sharing. And we were able to see then almost like a continuum that we could aim towards. And what we did at a whole school level then is we took a look at to see, well, how comfortable was everyone under those areas? So we found that some teachers felt that they were still newcomers when it came to it. Others felt they were explorers. Some felt they were integrators. And then we had an expert and we had a leader. We don't need everyone to be leaders. We don't need everyone to be experts. But we felt as a staff that it would be very good if we all aspired to be integrators that we're effectively using technology in our teaching and learning, we're integrating it with our teaching and with our learning. And really this was one of the great insights that the Selfie for Teachers framework gave us, that rather than staying as a newcomer or rather than staying as an explorer, that we maybe move towards an the integrator and see what we needed to do as a result. So we didn't feel, this was kind of the profile of what we gathered from our exploration. We didn't feel we had anyone on staff or no one on staff felt they were a pioneer, but we did feel we had one expert when it came to digital content and a leader. And then that we would try then to have everyone as an integrator, or at least have an integrator at every class level. So we got back to drill further down to see exactly, well, what do we need to be able to do in terms of searching and selecting? And of course, it says that we use searching and selecting criteria to identify digital resources for teaching and learning. But that would be quite, you know, a, a low level. So what we have tried to, tried to do is that we have access to Britannica online, that we start off with the basic skills for all teachers there. They complete some online courses that we have identified, courses on keywords, on safe searching, and there's a summer course that we're all going to do together in our school here. That's the way the Irish system works. You can apply to do a summer course if your school is big enough. When it comes to creating the actions that we added then is that there are again a range of online courses. There's a teacher who is trained in film in school workshops. 
So she will develop that work, uh, that workshop with all staff. And there's another teacher who is very comfortable with online forms and how to create assessment items as a result. So they, these are all the actions that we're going to take. And that has helped me as a school leader because I now have a defined plan. In terms of modifying, I suppose a lot of teachers weren't aware that you could take content that was there already. And if it's copyright free uh, under Creative Commons, et cetera, that you could modify it and make it your own. So we have, uh, we're getting an input on Creative Commons and uh, that it applies to images as well as to text. And certainly that has been a big eye opener for many teachers. Uh, our assistant principal with responsibility for technology will make sure that everyone is off okay as to how we manage and protect our information. And in terms of sharing for now, all of our information will be shared through Google Classroom. But the main thing is that the selfie for teachers framework, when we compared them all, has helped us to map out this continuum. How are we going to develop these, these workshop opportunities or to develop staff? Well, as I mentioned earlier, some of the supports will come from within and then we may have to go to external sources for some of our support. So some of our workshops will be by our own staff for our own staff. So using expertise, using the expert we have on staff and digital resources, and hopefully that they will move everyone on their journey towards integrators. We will coach and mentor colleagues at class level. So hopefully if we have an integrator at each level and then we'll have an expert in the school. We realize that we don't have all the information. So we're going to try to have school-based workshops with an external provider. We're going to access uh, online courses, and I'm going to give some staff permission to at attend external courses so that they in turn will um, share all of that learning with the staff that are still in the school. So again, the two frameworks, Selfie for Teachers and Selfie, for me as a school leader have helped me to address two of the most important domains I have to look at my work under. The learning and teaching selfie for teachers has been invaluable because it has shown me how many integrators I have, how many experts I have, and maybe how we can move them forward. But the selfie framework has been hugely valuable as well in looking at our whole school and what we want to achieve. So at, that, at this point, I have finished my input. I'd be more than happy to take questions at the end uh, in any way. And uh, so if you have any questions noted, and I'm delighted, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, the teacher's perspective next. Thank you very much, Sean. Indeed, uh, many thanks for sharing your perspective and many thanks for explaining your reflection process as a school based on these specific areas identified by the uh, selfie tool and the selfie for teachers tool. Uh, it's very interesting to see what, uh, what you brought in practice back and what actions you have taken after initiating this kind of uh, reflection process at school level. Um, I'll let the participants to uh, share their questions in the chat and uh, I will come back to you at the end and I will give the floor to Irini so she can also share her own experience from using the tool and uh, what impact the tool had in her practice and how can we uh, be inspired by her own experience. Irini, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me OK? Yes, um, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sean, for your presentation. It was very informative to uh, see how it was implemented in an entire school. Um, so today I would like to start my presentation um, by sharing my experience with the pilot program for Selfie for Teachers. 
um, and share with you my uh, perspective and the experience that I had through uh, the workshops and trying to implement Selfie for Teachers uh, in our school. So um, just um, before I begin, um, um, my name is Irini Gunduri. As we said before, I have been uh, teaching in Silverline Private School in Limassol, Cyprus for the past seven years in the role of the media studies teacher. And as I am sure with uh, many of you, I'm always looking for ways to uh, enhance my um, teaching skills, my uh, teaching practices and the learning experience of my students. So um, I will begin by detailing the experience with the workshops I have attended and how they helped me introduce Selfie for Teachers in my school. Uh, I also want to share a couple of successful case studies um, that we've had uh, since we implemented Selfie for Teachers in our school and also share some recommendations I have um, to other teachers uh, if you're interested in making the steps, implementing this in your own practice. Um, so I came across Selfie for Teachers initially on my own, um, but I never really, I, I completed the survey, but I never really got to integrate it in my uh, teaching. So I was very interested to participate in the seminars and uh, the workshops when I uh, saw their availability to see how, um, like find more practical ways to actually use that uh, into my uh, teaching. So uh, the workshops uh, were organized by the Cyprus University of Technology and led by Dr. Elena Giza, a professor at the Department of Communication and Internet Studies, and Dr. Yanis Yeryu, special teaching staff again at the Department of Communication and Internet Studies. Uh, we had a total of four workshops that spanned over approximately two months. And the experience and the knowledge gained there was invaluable. Not only I learned how to navigate uh, the tool effectively, but I had the opportunity to engage with teachers um, from public and private schools um, and learn about their teaching practices. And um, we were able to share uh, insights into the diverse teaching experience that we had. So the workshops were structured in a way that centered around firstly understanding the, the survey and the tool and then um, around our individual development specifically to the area that we chose to develop. Um, as you have seen, if you have completed the survey of Selfie for Teachers and got any report back, uh, we can all see the areas that we're um, good at and the areas that we need to work on and that needs we need to develop on. So uh, we got the chance to identify the uh, area that needed most um, development. In my case, that was the assessment. And I've also included here the suggestions on how to improve that specific area. Uh, and actually, my personal very specific goal was to be able to give feedback to students in real time and also find different ways um, to communicate with my students maybe through video notes or audio notes so try to strive away from the um, the more traditional ways of giving feedback so we in the seminars we got to create our own um, action plan detailing the steps we had to take uh, to achieve our very specific goals and of course that involved specifying our area and creating uh, clear targets. And I know that sounds very easy when you think about it. It makes a lot of sense. Um, and there are suggestions in the report, but having a support group and being part of a team actually gave me personally motivation boost to um, achieve and surpass my goals. Um, we all had an opportunity in the workshops to uh, pr present our process and our findings um, and our interactions with specific tools and new technologies. So not only I found out a lot of things about my own um, targets, but I got to hear um, from other teachers and how they uh, managed to um, engage with different technological tools or um, how they got to work in their own classrooms. 
So um, what Selfie for Teachers did and the workshops did for me were basically sparked some joy again into my teaching because I understand that with day to day um, I have activities that we have to do at school, classroom management, responsibilities and writing lesson plans and reports. Sometimes we can get a little bit lost uh, in that perspective. So um, I understand the necessity of uh, selfies for teachers and that really um, helped start a process of professional development for me, especially involving digital technologies. I know I'm a media studies teacher, but more theoretically, so that actually gave me um, an initiative to work more practically with technology. So uh, these workshops uh, helped me familiarize myself with these uh, features, uh, understand the survey questions and the indicators and gain insights uh, into the best practices for implementation. So through this journey, we got to share feedback from colleagues, talk about our strategies, our struggles and limitations, and uh, learn so much from each other. Um, I was able to find new tools uh, that helped me giving feedback to my students um, through trial and error and through suggestions of other teachers. And actually that sense of community and support is what I wanted to bring back to my school. And we move on to trying to make Selfie for Teachers part of the school. Not trying, actually. We, I think we, we're getting there. We're on a very good um, road into achieving that. So as I said at the beginning, I have been working at Silver Line Private School for the past seven years. Uh, we're a fairly small school, ranging from pre-reception to year 13, following the English National Curriculum. And in total, we have 300, uh, 300 students. I personally work in the secondary school where we have about 100 students uh, from year 7 to 13. Um, and I would like to mention here that all our students in the secondary school must have their own laptops uh, with them in the classroom. We're trying to, since this year, so we're trying to embed technology into our teachings as much as possible. So I wanted to introduce Selfie for Teacher in my school as soon as the workshops ended, and that was a gradual process. Initially, um, Dr. Eleni Giza and Dr. Yanis Yoryu helped me set up a group assessment um, instead of the individual one that we got here to manage to assess um, teacher, the, the teachers as a whole, the school as a whole. So having a group assessment gives the opportunity to reflect on groups over 10 people and look at the overall review of the school. Um, <clears throat> the, produce, the proposal to introduce Selfie for Teachers in the school was met positively. Uh, with the school management, um, so we decided to start with an initial presentation of the tool. Um, and I want to say that I consider myself lucky that I get to work with um, a very open-minded and supportive uh, management in the school. Um, I was able to um, deliver this presentation in one of our weekly meetings. And uh, I was glad to see that my colleagues were also excited to participate and um, complete the questionnaire. So then we were able to go over the overview of the results uh, while teachers got their individual reports, reports. So once the survey was completed, I proceeded to the data collection and analysis stage. Um, it provide, the Selfie for Teachers provides a comprehensive analysis of the survey results, as we saw before, um, allowing us to identify both the strengths and weaknesses uh, in, areas of, in areas of improvement. So these data-driven uh, approach empowered me to reflect on our teaching practices more objectively. Um, we also had to find a way to embed this in our professional development to allow teachers to set goals um, long term uh, moving forward. So at its essence, Selfie for Teachers is a self-reflection tool, allowing us to reflect on our teaching practices and development and um, reach the goals that we set for ourselves. And that perfectly aligns with the ideology of the school and lifelong learning. So among, along with the management team, we decided to take the following steps. We uh, decided to use Selfie for Teachers as part of our development plans. Um, that means setting a goal at the beginning of the school year that we get directly from the results of the school. 
Uh, it could be just one of the areas that we want to um, use and implement in our own teaching. It could be more. Um, but although it, it should be more, um, it shouldn't be mandatory to do so, we wanted to include at least one uh, of our targets uh, in our plans just to make sure that we are developing consistently our uh, technological skills. Um, so alternatively, this can be used as part of faculty improvement plans, uh, depending on the results. For example, if we see an area for improvement for the whole school, we can focus on that specifically. Um, and that actually takes us to um, our heads of faculties that ask teachers to complete the survey two times a year. Um, one probably before the lessons begin in September and one after Christmas. And that way we can have a clearer picture on the improvements we want to make, but also check our progress in the areas we have been working on. Um, being in our faculties allows for better support uh, discussions and also possibly a creation of a toolkit where we can share with our colleagues. Um, and that is tied with the educators pedagogic competencies and more specifically the digital resources. Um, working in faculties made sense to us since um, teachers that teach similar um, subjects might want to use similar tools, might need um, to improve on areas uh, as a faculty, so that, that's why we focused on our teams. And also, I know it's a, it's a simple one, but we created a Teams on our Microsoft Teams that we use at school uh, to allow for easier communication and offer support to each other. Um, I have also made myself uh, available to colleagues as a person of contact to offer my support as best as I can. I'm not an expert, but at least we can work together to um, find a plan to create clear targets for ourselves um, until we get this rolling in the school. So um, for our next um, uh, part of the presentation, I would like to share with you some um, uh, case studies that we have. Um, for our drama teacher was actually the first that approached me and was determined to use uh, digital tools in her teaching. She has been teaching drama for more than 10 years and never really considered introducing technology in her lessons as she felt that she needed to be more practical and the, the use of technology was redundant. Um, but it was only after completing the survey and looking at the many options she had um, that she realized that she could be doing more. Uh, that's another uh, pro of the uh, advantage of the tool that it gives you so many possibilities to see where you can be working at and how much you can um, advance. So her goal was to start introducing apps to help students with their stage performance and by embracing them her experience was quite transformative with the students. Uh, so from screenwriting and lighting to direction uh, these tools have opened a new world of possibilities for her students. Um, so with dedicated software, she can guide students through the process of crafting uh, storylines, exploring dialogue, uh, developing characters. She can use apps that show lighting on the stage and how that impacts um, the performances and all those things that you cannot really do in the school environment, especially if you don't have the right equipment. So again, something small, but it really impacted her teaching and um, allowed her to move in different ways that she did before. Uh, so all these would not have been possible if she didn't time to self-reflect and look at the most advanced answers. Uh, and of course, we always have to see the impact that has on the students, not just using technology because we want to use technology. Uh, so the overall, overall, the impact of integrating applications in drama education uh, has been um, very empowering. Uh, to embrace the artistic potential, uh, to allow them to collaborate more effectively and develop skills that um, extend beyond the theatrical realm. Uh, so by embracing digital tools, the teacher was provided the teachers with more holistic and enriching uh, learning environment that um, allows for more dynamic and um, technology driven world. 
Um, and for her next step, she has she's been quite ambitious. She wants to introduce augmented reality in her classroom, where she uh, will be able to see students will be able to see ancient playwrights uh, discuss their work that come to alive in front of the students. Uh, but we're working on it step by step. Um, and another uh, colleague that has taken steps to improve on the area of digital resources and also her teaching and learning area was one of our inclusion support assistants uh, working with a student in the autism spectrum. Uh, the student had trouble reading, although she's over 16, uh, always struggled with reading and um, using technology, using a tablet so far was still not enough. Um, but during the completion of Selfie for Teachers, uh, she realized that they were not making enough use of digital technologies. Um, so she tested many apps. Uh, through trial and error, she managed to find an application that could adjust font sizes and colors, uh, could highlight the beginning and ending of sentences. Um, and that small change actually uh, empowered the student to navigate online materials, participate in classroom discussions, um, engage with educational content on a more uh, equal footing with her peers. So the student was not only able to read better, but their confidence skyrocketed and she, they're now confident to speak and read in front of her classmates. So overall, we are able to see that we can benefit from developing our own professional engagement and competencies around technology. Um, so we decided to ask for more professional development as well as teachers as a whole. Uh, and we plan to do so during our inset days, uh, right before the school year. As Sean said, we may were able to see as a school what we needed to develop on more. So we're planning, uh, the management is planning on uh, giving us that opportunity. Um, of course, no journey is without its challenges and throughout uh, uh, Selfie for Teachers I encountered some obstacles, not obstacles that we're able to overcome, but something that you might encounter as well is um, uh, that we need to take in mind that there is always a learning curve um, when implementing any new tools or even when trying to uh, learn a new um, get engaged with a new technology. So teachers need to invest time and effort to familiarize themselves with the features and functionality of new software or when <clears throat> advancing their own skills. Um, another one is integration with existing workflows. Uh, Selfie for Teacher needs to be integrated smoothly with the existing workflows and systems by teachers. So we might encounter compatibility issues with other educational tools or platforms uh, can pose obstacles in terms of data sharing, uh, synchronization or compatibility with existing teaching materials that can be um, make a plan to overcome this. And the last one for me um, is access and equity. This is an issue that was raised during the workshops that I participated in. Uh, so depending on the funding of the school, um, access to necessary devices, reliable internet connectivity and resources, there might be issues to implementing the tool uh, effectively. Um, so ensuring e equitable access to technology is crucial to avoid um, exasperating educational inequalities. So providing uh, equitable access to devices and um, everything else that we can ensure that our students can benefit from the technology enhanced learning experiences. Um, now let's talk about, about the um, insights that I gained while using this tool for the past few months. Um, so I witnessed positive changes in uh, my instructional strategies, uh, my students' engagement and classroom dynamics. So by implementing the action plans developed through Selfie for Teachers, I observed um, improved student learning outcomes and a more conductive learning environment. So number one is the collaboration and sharing. So the tool can facilitate collaboration and sharing among teachers. 
Educators can use it to exchange instructional ideas, best practices, um, and resources with their colleagues, promoting uh, a collaborative teaching community and fostering professional growth. Uh, secondly, the um, incorporation of technology in the classroom has revolutionized the teacher-student connection, it can foster uh, a better teacher-student connection uh, that is more meaningful between educators and learners. So through technology, teachers can engage students in innovative and inter interactive ways. Uh, igniting their curiosity and enthusiasm for learning. The result is a more thriving learning environment where teacher-student connection flourishes, enabling students to reach their full potential. Uh, and of course, I did not uh, add it in my presentation, but definitely um, an outcome of this is uh, advancement of our professional uh, teaching. So, um, some recommendations that I can share with you uh, if you decide to move forward with this tool in your school. Based on my experience, um, first and foremost, embrace feedback with an open mind. It's important. Um, collaborate with colleagues, uh, both within and outside school, to gain diverse perspectives and insights. Uh, and finally, consider integrating Selfie for Teachers into your professional development plans uh, to foster continuous improvement. Um, in conclusion, Selfie for Teachers has been a game changer for me and my school. Uh, it has empowered me to take um, charge of my professional growth, uh, guided by data and collaboration. So by implementing the four stages of Selfie for Teachers, the preparation, survey administration, data collection, and reflection and action planning, I witnessed a significant improvement in my teaching practices. And I'm concluding this presentation with any questions that uh, you might have. And I want to thank you all for your time and attention today. Many thanks, Irene. Uh, many thanks for this very interesting presentation. It's uh, it's great to see the impact the tool had in your case, and the congratulations also for uh, you being the initiator and facilitator and coordinator of this <laughs> professional development uh, journey at your school. Uh, this is something that definitely proves your own leadership skills. So thanks also for highlighting the need for the pedagogical use of technology and not only the use of technology for the sake of using technology. That's a very crucial and important uh, element that we need to highlight uh, mm -hmm. when we are talking about uh, integrating te technology and uh, speaking about digital education in general. Uh, so many thanks for the presentation. I would invite the participants now to share any questions they have in the chat. Uh, in the meantime, I have some questions for both of you, both uh, Irini and Sean. Um, so uh, Irini, you talked about uh, challenges and uh, limitations. Um, and it's great also to see that uh, you try to overcome these challenges. I would like to ask if the, the use of the tool, the introduction of the tool had an impact in the school climate, speaking in terms of the of the way you collaborate with colleagues. Did you see an impact in the way you, you work together, in the way you interact and share uh, practices in general? Um, yes, we did actually. Um, Firstly, when we realized how much more we can be doing with our teaching, um, that on its own had a huge impact on uh, many of the colleague of my colleagues uh, that wanted to improve their own uh, teaching practices. And then that later on translated into creating groups and people started to share resources and coming together to um, discuss how we can move forward with this. So definitely it had an impact in um, a more collaborative environment within the school. What about you, Sven? Yeah, I, I, I just found it so rich in terms of professional dialogue. Um, we were having conversations about, you know, elements of teaching with technology that we never had before. Um, I think one of the standout sentences for me was uh, we didn't realize how much we didn't know <laughs> so that there was a number of teachers you know where you take a topic like uh, digital content 
and you say, right, it's either content online or it's content you create, but they hadn't considered sharing it. They hadn't considered modifying it. They hadn't considered keeping it secure. How are we going to make sure that it, um, you know, we're not infringing copyright? Because far too often we have been very careless with that. We have we 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 think that everything that's on the internet is there is there for us to use. Uh, but that's not the case. You have to be very careful that people go to huge trouble to copyright material. And therefore, if you're going to use it, uh, you need to give attribution. Uh, you, in some cases, you need to seek permission. And in some cases, you need to modify it if you're allowed to. Uh, so it was that richness of professional dialogue that was great. And there was a great sense of camaraderie that there were some experts on staff. There were some integrators on staff who were, you know, well on their digital journey and that they were open to share their talents with others. Uh, you know, and those teachers who, you know, needed the experts or needed the integrators, they have other talents that they in turn will share. So uh, as a school leader was a very rich experience and one that I would recommend. Excellent. Thank you for sharing this experience, uh, Sean, and for sharing this, uh, these thoughts. Uh, one more question. Uh, one more question. Were there any uh, unexpected findings? Let's say something that you discovered through this process, and it was uh, uh, relevant or either a bit of irrelevant with this specific tool, but it was an interesting finding because you embarked in this uh, in this journey. Irini, first you maybe. You're muted, Irini. Sorry, I couldn't hear you very well. Can you repeat the question? Sure. The question is, uh, if, you, if you had any unexpected uh, findings in the process uh, that um, are either relevant to the Selfie for Teachers tools, the, the, the Selfie for Teacher tool, or uh, more relevant about the, yeah, the mindset or the school practices, uh, something that you didn't expect you will discover through by, by embarking in this process. Um, I think um, what surprised me the most is how um, teachers wanted to do this, how, how many teachers um, were very enthusiastic into sharing resources and talking about their professional um, development and um, self-reflect on their teachings and practices. I, because with the introduction of anything new in schools, I understand there can be a little bit of hesitation. So um, for me to, it was surprisingly, um, it was very pleasantly surprised to see uh, how teachers embraced this and um, really, really wanted to uh, focus on their development. Uh, because as I, as I said, with uh, everything that we have to do as teachers and especially the bureaucracy of the school, um, actually taking time to uh, enhance our skills and find things that we love and incorporating in the classroom, um, it, it was really good to focus on that. So that was a pleasant surprise for us. Sounds good. So it seems like they just need you needed an Irini to uh, light up the fire, right? I think a push. Generally, just a, a push. <laughs> a push. A push is always needed and it's always welcome. What about Shan? Yeah, I think the main thing for me was that probably due to the COVID closures and the fact that schools were closed across Europe and many teachers were forced to use technology in some shape or form and even the way we book flights now in the way our digital lives have moved online i think there are very few teachers who would categorize themselves as newcomer in the selfie kind of framework anymore like if they haven't come across technology in their teacher training if they haven't come across it as a student themselves and now you know, you have to use it in your teaching. It's not something that you can just 
go from one end of the week to the other without using technology. So really, I, I maybe on one or two domains, they might be regarded as a newcomer. But overall, I think there are very few teachers now who are newcomer in that, that sense. I think, yes, we have a high number of explorers, uh, but not necessarily newcomers. I think that was the surprising thing for me and a pleasant surprise at that. Um, you know, and I, I think the the day of a teacher saying, uh, well, I don't use technology, um, I think are are numbered. One more question coming from one participant. Liliana is asking, uh, how do you involve other teachers and what is the timing of teacher training, mainly at the start of the school year or also during the entire school period? I think, uh, Swan, let's start with uh, you because uh, you ex you said that you have also a nice uh, training agenda at your school. So, yeah, please let us know how you organize yeah, this. I suppose uh, the involvement of, of 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 all teachers is first and foremost, and I suppose I am in a position where I can call all teachers to to training events. So we have we have days in our school calendar where we have our staff meetings, and then we have days where we can dedicate them to teacher training. So in that way, you know, but I. I don't, uh, you know, I don't feel that anyone in the school is forced to train. They're invited. We buy into this together. We're working on this together, and I think that's where you get greatest buy-in. Um, the uh, really what satisfied me above anything else is that the teachers made themselves available, but they have also made them available off timetabled time. They, you know, they'll say, we'll be a mentor to the others. If you have a problem, come into my classroom. If you have a problem, meet me after school. They're not precious about having just timetabled development. We're, we're a team and the selfie tool is a tool that has allowed us to develop as a team. Um, so, you know, in that way, we're not forcing it. It's just the findings have brought us together. So um, that's that's my response to that question. Excellent. Thank you, Swan, for sharing. Um, OK, I don't see any other question in the chat. Uh, I see very uh, nice comments, though. So congratulations uh, to both of you for for sharing your practices, for initiating this process. These comments are all here, so you can see them also by yourself. Um, before we close, I would like just to mention that uh, as part of this uh, webinar series, we also have a mandatory activity that we invite you to complete. And um, actually, uh, the mandatory activity is to use the tool and uh, reflect uh, on the results, so reflect on your so on the results from your self-assessment and share this reflection um, in a form that we have prepared for you. So we highly recommend to, to use it, to try it out. As we said on Monday, it's quite easy to use, it's quite easy to register and also not very time consuming to complete the, the, all the questions in all the areas. So you're highly encouraged to use it, uh, spend some time to reflect based on the questions that you have prepared, we have prepared for you and share your reflection in the forum comment on each other reflections and try to encourage and share ideas on uh, how we can all develop further our practices and develop uh, professionally. So um, any final words, Irini or uh, San, before we close? No, I, mean, I, 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 I just think it's a great forum and just to see uh, the, the number of people that are willing to come on board and to learn more about the selfie tool. Uh, on my last slide, I, I, I left a, an email address. So if anyone is um, wants further advice, feel free to contact me and uh, to wish you the best of luck in your implementation. Um, I think sometimes teachers aren't aware of, you know, the number of tools and frameworks that are developed by uh, uh, experts all around Europe and the great work that's being done all around Europe. And uh, sometimes, you know, the biggest challenge for a school leader is where do I start? And yet 
you know, uh, these frameworks here help you well along the journey. They're not going to do the work for you, but at the same time, they give you great scope to have professional dialogue with your staff, to develop your staff, and to develop that sense of team. So just to say well done to everyone, and um, maybe at some stage in the future, you can, if you're in Ireland, you can come and see some of the technology in action here in the school. And um, just to wish everyone the best of luck and have a great summer. Thank you, Swan. Any final words from you, Irini? Um, the only thing I have to say is just try it. Try it in your school, try it with your colleagues, um, see what feedback you get. And I promise uh, the least that it will do is foster communication and um, uh, collaboration with your colleagues. So that's for me. Excellent. Thank you both for being here with us today. Thank you both for sharing your experiences. Uh, thank you all also the participants uh, for being here with us today. I wish you a wonderful evening and uh, keep growing, keep flourishing, keep improving, keep testing your practices. Have a nice evening and see you online soon.